I don't think of narcissism as a particular diagnostic category. I think that that it's a, a kind of continuum, that we all have problems that we would consider to be narcissistic, um, that, that we're all vulnerable to narcissistic solutions to, to problems. Um, for instance, uh, speaking personally, um, I, I know that when I felt that my physical well-being was compromised in one way or another. A couple of years ago, I had back surgery. And I was really weakened and unable to do things for myself. And I became, I would say, that pulled my own, from my own narcissistic solutions, by which I mean I kind of, I, I, I withdrew into a state where I felt I could do everything including things that I obviously couldn't do. I rejected help because I didn't want to face the vulnerability and the dependency that, that the condition was causing. Uh, I pushed people away. I, 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 I became kind of grandiose, I think, in my own, um, in, in, in my own trying to take care of myself. Yes, I, I was able to identify a particular cause of feeling vulnerable and weak. Is that I think that we all have times when we're when our weakness is driven home to us, and when we fall back on solutions that would be called narcissistic. It might have been that I could have withdrawn and and withdrawn into the illness and sort of succumbed to the disability over a prolonged period of time because I was um, a, a, a different sort of person, a person who was wired differently, might have might have withdrawn into a kind of helplessness. But explain why that would count in the clinical world as being a narcissistic response or problem. Because it, because it's a, it, it's another way of shutting out a, the world and shutting out the experience of weakness and creating a kind of self-contained world in which you can function comfortably. I, I sometimes think of people who I consider narcissistic as almost like having an allergy to other people. Uh, they, they, they react uh, to the normal ups and downs of human relationships in a very extreme way, and they can, they, their self-esteem is vulnerable to collapse uh, on the basis of small slights and small rebuffs and what what most of us or many of us at least would would consider the normal kind of ups and downs of relationships. Yes, I, I mean somebody who comes in and is and is the life of the party. Uh, you know, people say of that sort of person, he or she is sucking all the air out of the room. And when somebody does that, they're basically making it uh, very difficult for other people to really be themselves. And and the the other people become the audience of the the grandiose narcissist. Um, and 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 they don't they don't touch the narcissist. I think that that there can be a kind of withdrawal that denies the illness, but that also builds a wall around the person that, that shuts out others. I, I guess backing up, I, I think that shame is a, is a very important uh, factor, a very important emotion that we can find in, in people who you would consider narcissistic. C certainly, going back to my to, to my situation, I, I was ashamed of being weak. Now, why was I ashamed of being weak? That goes back into my history. Uh, lots of people can be weak and accept it and feel that they're going to get better and not worry too much about it and not have to go to any kind of extraordinary measures to avoid confronting themselves with the feelings. But but if, if people are, are particularly ashamed of 
the uh, what what they see is the failure, whether it's whether it's not having money, not having enough talent to do what they want, not being good looking enough to attract partners. Uh, uh, when it, it when when there's that kind of shame that's attached, that's that's not something that the people we're talking about are aware of. That's so. I I know I I don't have money. I I better act like I do. I know that I'm that I don't have the talent that I'm pretending to have. But I better act like I do. Look, pe people people come into my office. Um, and my job is to get them to think about everything that they don't want to think about and to find in themselves everything they don't want to find in themselves. And the, the art of, of doing psychotherapy is, is creating an, an environment and, and creating a kind of process where people start to feel comfortable piece by piece, uh, getting in touch with what they've really spent their whole lives pushing, pushing away. I think, I, yeah, one of the reasons, uh, you know, I was saying before that I, I don't really think, I don't like thinking about narcissism as a particular diagnostic category is that uh, I, I think in order to be helpful to people who have narcissistic kinds of problems, we really have to acknowledge those, recognize those problems in ourselves. We have to recognize that that even though something might be writ large in one person, that we all share the same basic struggle, uh, and and that uh, that we're that we're all vulnerable to that kind of solution. My back surgery. Uh, a person who loses his or her job in a, you know, painful way. Um, somebody who um, who uh, who loses a, a, a love partner either because the other person leaves or, or even sometimes because the other person dies. Um, that that uh, that that kind of uh, disruption of a, of a way of living that we've come to count on can trigger all sorts of narcissi narcissistic, narcissistic solutions in, in virtually anybody. And I think if a, if a therapist sees the narcissist as, uh, first of all, if the therapist sees the narcissist as the narcissist, as other, it's, it's going to be, and especially because shame is such a vulnerable kind of emotion. and. That, that it's it's going to be very difficult to get in touch with that person in a way that's going to help them to start to have enough confidence and enough trust to be able to share some of those vulnerabilities with another human being when when i say that i'm thinking about people who are whose reactions are narcissistic who, who are who are in my practice who are not the kinds of people who suck all the air out of the room at a party, there are people who live in a very in very withdrawn ways in the world, and um, who who don't who, who either don't have the, uh, the 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 ability or don't what whatever it is that makes some some people capable of the grandiose solution to the vulnerability. Many people don't have that, and they live sort of withdrawn, quiet lives in which they're frightened to attempt anything because they're so convinced of their uh, that they'll fail and they're and they're so um, allergic to failure and it, it hurts it hurts them so much so they they, they live uh, often very self-protective lives withdrawn there's there certainly is a connection Freud saw it from the beginning, there's a connection between narcissism and, and certain kinds of depression, as well. So that you know, so that very often people who would be considered, who, who a clinician would consider narcissistic, is is somebody who somebody else might see as as depressed or just very withdrawn, because they're they're frightened. They're frightened. 
they're they're um, they know how much uh, the world hurts, and they withdraw from it. The beginning. I I, I think I've developed more sympathy and empathy for all my patients than I had at the beginning, because I think I think I've come over the years to see more and more that um, people by and large do the best they can and that um, that that's a very important part of um, understanding patients is to realize that they're they're, they're struggling with you know with the hand that they were dealt whether it's uh, temperament or parents or social cultural factors what, whatever whatever it is and that they've they've done what what they had to do to um, to survive really so I've um, I, I, I've, I've come to um, think less and less in terms of psychopathology, which is distancing and keeps keeps you away from you know, it, it makes the patient into another other you know, that person is this or that and I'm not and more sort of seeing people as just trying to be human in, in much the same way I am trying to be human that the shock of the of that encounter the encounter with the patient who is other the patient's encounter with me as other um, can lead to a kind of objectification and diagnoses especially a diagnosis like narcissism which has a pejorative connotation um, can can break a human connection and I I know that one of the things that has happened um, by, by the way I, I, I would also want to say that that uh, I think when people start out in the field they, they they feel like they need a kind of distance they need they need to be the therapist to the patient who is other um, I think most of us is as we get more experienced or more comfortable with ourselves can um, can can find the, the commonalities that we have in the midst of the otherness I think it's a it's a kind of delicate balancing act because uh, I, I never I never uh, want to convince myself that I really understand somebody else that, that that's that's a kind of limit you know that that's a um, that that's something that you can never really fully achieve making the effort because I think when two people try to understand each other that that creates a kind of sense of confidence in who each of us is that can be very sustaining um, who are frightened can come out of themselves more be themselves you know feel freer to take risks and uh, not succumb to the anxieties we can certainly do that w w one of the things that we've learned I think in a hundred years and of course, Freud, Freud thought that you couldn't treat narcissists. That was the the and, and that that's one of the kind of unfortunate legacies of of the history of the concept is that uh, it, it started as a kind of diagnos diagnostic differential, where a certain kind of patient was treatable and a certain kind of patient wasn't treatable, and the narcissistic patients were not treatable. He believed that until the end of his life for sure although he certainly treated people who we today would look back on and say were on the narcissistic spectrum uh, but one of the things that we've 
learned for sure is that um, is that wh whatever treatment of narcissism or anything else really, but specifically narcissism, is it's it's not telling the patient what their unconscious conflicts are. It's not making you know traditional interpretations. It has something to do with building a relationship over a very long period, often, typically, a very long period of time that, um, that can help people to, to be trusting, going back to what we were saying before, to be trusting of the other, both the therapist as other and the otherness in themselves, and to be more at, at peace and that that, that that really doesn't come from uncovering repressed conflicts or memories or, you know, although that can be part of it, but that it, it really comes out of a process of living with somebody else in, through a therapy where you make that kind of approximation of I was, understanding. I was Yes, but to, to 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 know another person can mean knowing that they're angry with you, pissed off, that they're disappointed in you, uh, that they're competitive with you, uh, that they envy you. The, to 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 know another person, you know, is 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 to know. Um, what you what you can't predict and can't control and that's of course the narcissist i think the narcissist's greatest fear the, the greatest fear that all of us have in our narcissistic side is is that uh, is that we live in a world of people who are who are unpredictable and um and and who who we who, who could hurt us and who may be hurting.